Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum viewers. This is your host Adil Arif. Today with us we have a very special guest from Canada. His name is Asif Khan. Uh, Assalamu alaikum Asif Khan. How are you? I'm very fine. Uh, firstly, I would like you to uh, briefly tell about your background, or especially your educational background. Well, I was born in Kanpur, India, and the family migrated to Pakistan in 1950. And I was educated in Karachi till I did my BSc and MSc both in Karachi uh, from DJ and Karachi University. Then I went for further education to England, where I did my I have to repeat my MSc, and I did my PhD in the field of material science, which is a part. It is a it part of physics. Can you can say that? So you did that PhD uh, from KU Karachi University. No, I did the, my MSc from Karachi University in nuclear physics, nuclear physics. and when I went to England, yeah. I did uh, my MSc in material science. Then I did my PhD in material science. From which university? Uh, the university of London. Okay, so before uh, the interview, you told me that uh, you have been living outside Pakistan for the last 49 years. Yes. So uh, please tell us about that a bit. Well, after doing my MSc, I worked for a short period of time in the research industry. That research industry was in the steel, iron and steel research uh, industry. And I was uh, involved in ceramic section of iron and steel industry. And then, uh, naturally, I went to do my PhD. I resigned, I uh, started my work on my PhD. It took me three and a half years. After completion of my PhD, I went to my postdoctoral fellowship, and where I worked on the structure of uh, paper okay. after aging. And then I got the opportunity to work at the, in Ireland, as an prof uh, assistant professor at the Trinity College Dublin. And from there, I worked there for four and a half years. Then I got a fellowship in Belgium for one year. And from Belgium, I, I became a, a full professor in Malta uh, for four years. And then uh, somehow I joined a, a, university, a, a new university of engineering, uh, electrical and mechanical engineering, uh, major in, emphasis on the steel industry. You know, okay. so uh, I become the head of the academic staff. I work in Libya for two years. Uh, then I left Libya to go to Canada. And since then, I have been uh, teaching at the university level in Canada, and that's where I was. About a few years ago, I retired. Okay. So, uh, uh, you've come to Pakistan, and uh, your visit this time has been a very special one. Uh, I would say a missionary one. So, can, will you please tell our viewers about that? Uh, well put like that, what happened that uh, when I heard the situation about the flood victims, and uh, I mean, I, I, it became a sort of a ordeal for me to watch BBC day in, day out, what's happening, what, is there any improvement? And uh, then I invoked the idea to uh, Mehboob Alam, I said, look, I'm coming. And uh, my niece, who was uh, his wife, that I'm coming and uh, we want to, I want to do something. I came along with my wife, and she's a very active member of this kind of thing, you know. She's very, a very volunteer worker, very good volunteer worker. We both came along here, but we were told that, uh, well, it's better I should go to, to the place myself. So that's where I went, along, along with uh, Dr. Mehboob Alam, uh, uh, Mr. Tariq Sadab. Okay, so uh, you visited many places here in Sin. And uh, you saw all the flood victims. Please share what you saw. Well, we visited, uh, I think, uh, Tata and uh, Sajawal. Sajawal. And uh, I was really embarrassed to see the conditions of the people there. Our government has not done anything, as far as I can see. 
because uh, flood took place about three months ago or four months ago. The way I saw the people, they are sick, ill, miserable, poor, desperate. Our government has contributed nothing. If they, if they are telling they have done something, it must be done by NGOs, nothing by the government. And uh, hygienic condition in the two towns I visited are awful, disgusting. And how could the leaders who are running the, these cities could live with themselves? And uh, as far as the education is concerned, if schools are cl closed. If schools are open, teachers are missing. That kind of dedication our uh, government is showing towards education. If there is no education, no health, no justice, this country cannot survive. Our political leaders are either religious or just there for their own profit. There's, there's this uh, political mafia and there's a religious mafia. There is no law that functions here. You can see the traffic in Karachi. Same thing, countries, exactly in the same way countries are running. Did you feel that uh, the flood victims were very, they must be very frustrated and uh, they must be like uh, full hatred for the government? Did you feel that they were expressing their views on that? Uh, there is a group of people, they did express their view, but the majority of people are so innocent and, and submissive because the, those people, there is a group of people controlling them. And they are not allowed to say anything because uh, probably they will be asked to vote for them too. And this is the disgusting thing, you know. And these people, who, whosoever are in charge of that, I don't want to name the name of the families there who are running the, those two towns. If this is the two towns I saw, or two cities I saw, I don't know what the interior scene look like. And uh, uh, today in the paper I saw uh, in dawn there's a, a group of a line of people sitting on the floor. There's a young people. There is hardly any enthusiasm. These guys who are sitting begging, they should be contributing, cleaning the place up. Why don't they do that? This is why particularly I met a wonderful guy, Tariq Aziz. I said you have to bring the young people. Gather the young people, have some enthusiasm. People like me have ruined the country. We have to have a youth movement to, to contribute something positive towards the country. Okay, so uh, before coming to Pakistan, when you were actually collecting funds and all that for the flood victims, uh, you must have faced a lot of challenges from the people in Canada. So what kind of questions did you face from them? Well. Initially, uh, I'm not talking about Pakistanis. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you a very simple thing, you know, uh, that uh, Pakistani did contribute towards the flood victim. And this money went to the, some religious organization. I was also the contributor towards that, you know. Then what happened that uh, still the conditions not improving, news coming from here that a lot of money is lost, a lot of food is lost, a lot of clothing is lost in between. Then I talked to my wife, this is nonsense. I'm sitting here and watching on the television day in, day out. Let's do something about that. I've, then I phoned Dr. Mehboob Alam. I'm coming. And then I'm in the university and the different organization. I know, I said, we, we need money. And these are the people who are not Pakistani or Muslim. I got zero money from a Muslim, I'm telling you, zero. I got all the money from the local people. Okay, why is that? Why do you think? Uh... Oh, this uh, uh, hai. You, you know this place? Oh, in Pakistan, this hai. That's it. They're used to it. Uh, we are used to it. And this attitude. I mean, this is a very normal attitude. Listen. Uh, I can tell you openly, I'm not a very religious man, but I believe in Islam and Allah and Muhammad. But, I, uh, but here, we have become so fanatic. We are only, if I pray, I am...
praying for myself. You remember the phrase, but you say that, uh, helping hands are better than praying lips. And I believe in that firmly. And the thing is, you go to the mosque, I listened to the khutbah, twice I went, twice I was annoyed in the khutbah. And the imam was talking nonsense. And this is what problem is. We are following a, a, an illiterate person all the time. And consequently, look at the condition of the country. Right. So you mean to say that uh, you see in Pakistan that we are uh, not doing practical work in a positive way, but instead we are like uh, running after slogans and... Uh, slogans and uh, uh, we think that once I have finished five times prayer, I'm a good Muslim. I don't... I mean, in your opinion, in my opinion, no. Okay, so uh, how do the Canadians uh, see Pakistan right now? Uh, I mean, uh, as you told me right now that they contributed a lot. In, in, uh, in fact, they, they were the ones who contributed. No, they are, they are the ones who contributed, but originally they think we are all Taliban, we are all Al-Qaeda. Okay. But the thing is, it is my friends who contributed, I have to go to them. If normal Canadian, you go and talk, they say, you're all Taliban, you're all Al-Qaeda. That's how they think. And they think we all walk around with the, on our, around our waist, a bomb. That's how they think. And I keep telling them, this is not true. Ordinary Pakistani is a very innocent, very nice person. But we have been dictated by these two kind of mafia, which is, one mafia is running the country, other mafia is, is calling you for prayer and and people like heard following them. Okay, so uh, uh, you seem not so happy with Pakistani uh, organizations, uh, especially in the f uh, f flood work. And uh, I would like to know that how do you see the Western NGOs doing for the flood victims? When do you know about, uh, I. I did not see, I watched from the distance their activities because I was, I did not go very near. When, by the time I arrived, every, most of the people have gone, you know. I can see the tents and peop, some people have moved back, other people have moved in them permanently. But facilities are dismal, nothing, you know. Believe me, uh, I'm going to use the wrong word, dogs, in that part of my part of the world, looks live better than how these people are living. So, uh, Pakistan is facing a great challenge right now, especially Pakistanis. Where, uh, as you see, that the Pakistani government is not. Maybe I don't know. They don't have funds, or they they are not committed to help their people, or whatever the reason. So, how do you see? How can a normal patriotic Pakistani? What can you do? I mean, what is your vision? What is your line of direction that he should follow? Well, I think we have to collect, let's say, 10 sincere people. But what we need, youth, which is sincere. A sincere youth is required. Old people have damaged the country. You have to have a youth to work. And this youth could change the country. Otherwise, you see, one family could be in uh, PPP, or other people in Muslim League, the Awami League, or whatsoever it is, you know. And same family, every member in a different party, they are in power. And they, they have a firm grip. Some, somehow, we have to destroy this particular setup. And that could be done with the youth movement. And we need these young people but uh, are you talking about civil disobedience? No, it's not civil disobedience. Like uh, the, we are trying the, this particular thing. I said, Sajawal, I, I said, I want to use as a example. I, I want to make that as a mirror. And we are, we are getting funds from Germany or something. Uh, funds we'll get to start a school. Okay. And a school will want to make an example in sin. Then I even said that I'll talk to many organizations in Canada and Denmark and, and, and Germany where I know people there you go, and, and England too. So we want to clean up that town even inside out 
so that people, once they see this town, they should make their town look as good as this one. In other words, you want to create a model town? Model town, the, an example for the whole nation. Okay. Because we don't have that kind of sensitivity. You throw this, throw this, spit here, spit there, you know. And the whole country is sick. Okay, uh, have you worked on the budget that you require for, for this mega project? Listen, we are starting, you see, Qatra, Qatra, Darya, Nishara. We can start, and I can ask the people, in, in Europe and North America, what could they contribute? There are people who want to contribute. Okay, Asif Sahib, I would like to know that uh, during your trip to Sajawal and the other places in Sindh, was there any site that which is still flashing in your mind? I mean, site of some kid or any of the flood victim that you would like to share with the audience? Yes, uh, when I went to Sajawal, I saw a kid his whole face was completely swollen. And uh, I, did, I don't think he had ever had a shower for months. And he was suffering for some kind of illness. I'm not aware of because I'm not a medical doctor. And uh, our team was first to attend this person because he, this little boy of 12 or 10, something like that. And he was crying, he was inoculated, he has never been inoculated before in his lifetime, you know. He was looked after. And I was told by Dr. Mahmood he would be fine. But there's a problem of uh, abuse of uh, pan or chalia or, or cigarette or something like that. People, I mean, actually I, I filmed them, I asked people to open your mouth. They have uh, what's a good good car or something like uh, in their mouth. The thing which is troubling me, uh, I don't understand that uh, other people don't have the basic necessities like food and all that. So how come they have good cars and cigarettes with them? Well, I, I can uh, tell you something very easily. Uh, the poor people in Canada or Britain, they beg on the streets, but they drink. And that's what they need. They are alcoholic, they are lying on the street, and the government comes in the evening, they pick up these people, put in a room where they can sleep. Next morning, they're out again begging, you know. Exactly that's, that's, that's what is done to them. They were provided a drug, and they're happy with that drug. When you are a drug like that, you can, don't want to eat, you don't want to drink, you want to look after yourself. Okay, now, uh, since you are going back to Canada tomorrow, and uh, so what, have, what plans do you have for the future? Uh, as I said, that uh, uh, I, was in, I will be in touch with uh, Tariq Saab. And, uh, we and Tariq Saab is the uh, member of Institute of Medical Cure? That's right. And I will be, and, and, and Dr. Mehbu Alam, I will be uh, in contact with them and they will tell me what progress is going on in Sajawal because we are going to get a piece of land and still uh, I have a question mark on that. Why? Because this land is attached to a government school and I don't want uh, suddenly the government organization interfere or something like that. Why are you competing with us or something like so that? Won't you fee uh, get some kind of uh hurdle from the feudal people? This is the fear I have, because if you want to improve something, they will think we are changing the conditions. But we have talked to this particular young man, Tariq Aziz, and he said, I have 10 or 15 young men who are as dedicated as he, as he is. You know, I said, if you don't get, stand up, this town will fall apart. And that's what, uh, we have to have a youth movement, very strong youth movement in the whole country, but we can start from a small town. Okay, let's say if you, like you have the plan to set up a model town in Sajal, for that, uh, how much manpower do you need in form of youth? Well, put it like that, let's listen, when youth begin to work, that can make people who are sitting doing nothing. If you have a shop, their job would be you clean around your shop. You see, that, 
that you have to give this kind of uh, ideas to the people. You don't just keep throwing things on the street. Clean, there's no Pakai street, what do you call that? Uh, there's no uh, good roads there. At least they can, they're dusty road. At least they can clean those roads, you know that. And once you begin to show in Europe or North America, this particular agency is doing work. We might get finance to improve the condition, good roads, everything. But only thing I'm fear is the opposition from the local politicians. I know that. And even he said that there would be opposition. I said, do you have to fight that opposition? You know? Okay. So uh, are you satisfied with what uh, this institute is doing? Oh, I'm very satisfied. They, the, the amount of work they have contributed. I mean, I saw uh, last couple of trips, but they have done a lot of work before. And when I saw them working, their dedication was impeccable, impeccable. You got this gift from Sajal. Please tell about that. Well, it was a very beautiful surprise for me. Uh, our group were received by the local people such a beautiful manner. I was, I, I was not expecting. And I have a great collection of uh, Ajrax from that town. And they welcomed her very, very beautifully. And they are the ones who showed us a piece of land where a school could be established. But our group will do further work and they will inform me what they, are going to, what, what they have uh, achieved. We go from there. Okay, so what is your target? I mean, uh, when will you come back next time with the uh, funds and all that stuff from Canada uh, to start this uh, educational work? This educational work initially I want to do with the girls at the primary school level. And uh, what we did, uh, talked about to make a four-room four school where education is given in sciences, maths, arts, history. Across the road, there is a mosque, religious education. Education should be given there because I don't want this school turned into a madrasa. If it turns into a madrasa, it, it will lose its strength. I'm very sure about that. And because this is why our country is in trouble, we do not have a civil government or religious government. Uh, government according to religious or civil laws. Right. We have a, a mixture of such and we cannot achieve anything. We cannot. And uh, as, as far as uh, Sajawal, I am really looking forward to working there. And uh, my heart is there put like that. And I would say that would be my adopted town. Nice talking to you, Mr. Asif Khan. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, today you listen to a very motivational talk from Mr. Asif Khan. I hope that you will also support him and his institute from wherever you are. Now, uh, we'll see you in the next program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.